What's on at your gallery? It's Kids Arts Day, every day. Here's what we're doing in today's fun episode. Before we begin, grab your corresponding art kit, available from the Niagara Falls Art Gallery, or grab the following supplies from home so you can follow along. A 12 by 18 inch or 30 by 44 centimeter construction paper, a flat edge or a ruler from somewhere in your house. We also need you to find maybe a toonie. That's a measurement we're going to be using in our drawing, all right? So those are the materials, plus obviously the pastels that you've either purchased from the link below or that you found somewhere around the house. And now let's begin. All right, guys, let's get this project started. Uh, what I'm gonna ask you to do too is probably lift your sleeves up. You probably want those out of the way, especially since we're working with these nice oil pastels today. Now we are gonna be working on our tree frog, but before we get to that, I'd like us to split our paper into four different quadrants here. So dividing it in half and then in half sideways also. So I'm gonna use that nice shiny ruler that we have or that nice straight edge that you have. It's not important that you do exactly the middle, but the approximate middle here, I'm gonna draw a really super light line, guys. I really don't wanna press hard because I wanna race this later on towards the end of our project, all right? Really gentle, so you can almost barely see it on my paper. All right, so I've done my vertical line. I'm gonna hit up my horizontal line now, finding the approximate middle again. Here we go, that seems pretty good to me. Nice light line again. All right, here we go. We've divided it into our quadrants, pretty even. And this is how we're gonna start our amphibian drawing here for our frog. All right, now I need you to find that toonie that we talked about earlier, guys. Can you please grab that toonie? Where we're gonna be putting that, it's gonna be the eye for our tree frog. So what I'd like us to do is to find where we're going to be putting it first. So if you took at that left top quadrant over here, we want to go about a little bit higher than four fingers above that line, that horizontal line. All right, so we're looking at this area over here and about two fingers from the side. So if you measure it sort of, it's going to be approximately in that area there. So one more time, four fingers from the horizontal line and about two from the vertical. We're looking about this space right about here. I'm gonna grab that toonie and do a quick little trace of that toonie. This is gonna be the eyeball again for an awesome tree frog we're gonna be doing together. All right, here we go. Perfect, all right, set that toonie aside and here we are. We've got a nice beginning point for our tree frog. We've got a nice eyeball. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to do another little bit of a tracing around the eyeball. This is only gonna be about, I don't know, five millimeters or so, a tiny little space, all right? Just around the eyeball, really softly. We're going to be filling this in with a nice yellow color later on. All right. Remember, we always start with our white pastels and we finish with the black at the very end. We use all our colors in between because we don't want to have any smudge marks with that nasty black oil pastel. All right, so we've got a nice eyeball for our tree frog. The next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating sort of a bit of its face right now. All right, what I need you to do is to measure from the eyeball we just drew about four fingers away from that eyeball again. So lay your fingers down right beside the eyeball and add just sort of a little dot at the end of your finger. Right, we're gonna add a little bit of a straight line now where that dot was, all right? You can tell it's almost towards the middle of the eyeball where I put this dot. I'm gonna add just a little bit of a straight line coming down, down here, or something like that. You guys can take a good look at that. All right, then we're gonna add a nice horizontal line curving from that. This could be its beautiful mouth. So again, a curving a bit of a line here, just below where the eyeball is. It actually finishes right in line with the end of the eyeball there, which is pretty awesome. All right, there we are. Now we need a bit of a diagonal line. So from where our nose ended up here, I need to go on just a little bit of a diagonal line above there, All right, going towards the eyeball. All right, there we are, perfect. Not too long, you can see there's a nice space of two fingers now between that line and where the eyeball is, just if you need a little bit of a reference point. This bottom quadrant over here, so that bottom right quadrant, what we're gonna be doing is going about, again, this nice four finger measurement down. This one's gonna be nice and close to the end of the page, all right guys? We're only gonna be about, about two fingers from the inside of the page. So four fingers down, two across, and we're gonna do a little dot right about there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a huge line now, guys. Get ready, here we are. We're gonna go right above the eye. We're gonna do a nice line going on on a strong diagonal right down to that dot over there. All right, here we go. All right, we've got the back of our tree frog. Excellent. 
Now, one last little detail for the head here. I'd like to add another eyeball. Now, the weird kind of part about this is we can see the eyeball nice and profile towards us that we've drawn already. But the side eyeball is going to be just a little bit to the side. It's a little bit tricky, so let's go slowly on this. We're going to go over to the side here and cut sharply back down towards that sort of nose area that we created earlier. All right. And the final last piece we have to do is we have to add an eyeball in there. So if you can add a nice round part, that's the part of the eye that we can't really see because the head is turned. We need to do a nice part of the frog's leg over here. All right, now the best part about this is it's kind of easy to measure this part. It's gonna start in the absolute middle of your page where we made those two lines it's actually gonna touch right there. And it's gonna curve down and touch the dot we've already made, which is pretty cool. All right, here we go, let me show you. It's gonna fit about two fingers inside of it. If you need a little bit of a reference point, so I'm drawing just to start a nice bump that's going right towards that middle spot. Here we are, nice little bump, all right? Kind of like a rainbow, I guess. You can fit two fingers nicely inside of there. All right, perfect, so we've got that nice little bump. Now, guys, don't be afraid throughout this whole video to press pause at any time you want so you can catch up. Now this line, like I told you, is going to go right down and touch that dot again. So here we are, nice little angle, touch the dot. And we're going to continue that top line down as well, but it's not going to quite go as far as the one we just drew. So here we are, line comes down, and we stop it just a little bit early. Notice how there's almost about two fingers of space there also. So here we are, we're going to do a nice little curve. So we did our top curve. I'd like us to do a little bit of a bottom curve down here. Here we are, nice little bottom curve. There we are, a finger away from the one we just did. And it's not kind of quite gonna go as far as the other one. It's going to go right about here, about three quarters of the way up, approximately right there. I'll leave it about three fingers of space this time until the end of the beginning of the leg there that we started with. I'd like to add the arm. This part's pretty easy. So it's gonna start, it's gonna be touching exactly where the leg is, right? That middle part, again, we get to use. Let's do a nice curving spline, here we go. It's aiming almost towards the bottom left corner of our page, so here we are, it's gonna come out. There we go, just like that. Now you're gonna leave a little space and repeat the same process, almost looks like brackets, if you will. So here we go, leave a little bit of space, curving line, and we're gonna leave the outside part of it open just temporarily guys we've got to figure out where we're going to be putting that branch that this tree frog is sort of hugging onto like we talked about at the beginning all right so let's focus a little bit on that momentarily here so we know that the branch is going to be just sort of below the mouth it's going to carry on it's probably going to connect exactly to the arm there and then continue all the way down to the side of the page we don't want to make it too too thick because it's a lot of coloring for later on and we don't want to make it too thin or else it would fall over if a real frog was on it. So here we are. Let's do this really softly. Don't press hard because we will be erasing a little bit of this line later on to add fingers and such. So here we go. Let's start with the line over here. So on the top, we're bringing it down to that first sort of arm piece and we're stopping. We're going to leave room for where we're going to be curving the arm around the branch. And we're going to continue just below the arm. All the way down to the bottom of the page. Fantastic. Good work, guys. All right, let's make this branch just a little tiny bit thicker. So here we are. The bottom, obviously, towards wherever the tree or the bush is would be obviously a little bit thicker than the top would be to make it a little bit realistic for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this line go maybe, I don't know, about the middle of the leg back here. Perfect. Fantastic. And we're going to sort of estimate where the rest of this branch would go. It would probably continue up here in between and then up off the page. Now, if you want at the end here, it's totally up to you. You can add a couple branches going in different directions. I mean, you can keep it one solid branch if you want, but I think I'm gonna make it a little funky here. I'm gonna have a branch going up, and then another little bit of a V here for the other branch, all right? So it shows two branches sort of branching off from the main part here. So we've got our branch set in, but we'd like to finish off by adding those fingers and those toes that are sort of wrapping themselves so that this tree frog can hold on to the branch. All right, this top part's the easiest one. Let's start with that. We're gonna do a nice big curve or a bump. There we go. And it has to go on the outside of the branch. If it goes on the inside, it won't look very realistic. All right, we need to add the fingers from the other arm. We didn't talk much about the other arm. It's on the other side, so we can't see it, but we can see the fingers sort of wrapping around the branch. This part here is a little bit weird because we've already done the branch, all right? We will have to sort of erase a little portion of it so we can get the fingers there. 
half of the finger go into the branch and the other half go on the outside. All right, there's one for you and I can erase really gently in between. There we go, perfect. And then I'm gonna add another one. You can leave a space in between or you can make them touching. That's totally up to you. There's my second finger. A little bit of erasing there to show where it is. Fantastic. And finally, the last one. Okay, this one here I might just have on the outside. There we go, perfect. And finally, let's add this foot at the end here. All right, again, three nice toes. These ones will be a little bit longer because we can see a little bit more of it. All right, so I'm gonna curve my bottom line here that I've left open of the leg and put it towards the end of the branch there. Fantastic, nice curving line that's going towards the end of the branch. Then I'm going to add a little bump. Remember, it's sticking out just a little bit. Try to remember that when you're drawing it. You wanna have it just a little further out so it is actually looking sticking off the branch of it. All right, there, curve it back in a little bit. Fantastic, all right, and then again, if you want, you can erase that little portion and the finger, fantastic. All right, next finger, curve it over and outside again a little bit. And finally, that last one. And we're gonna bring this line right back to the leg and stop. The next step we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding some colors to this picture. So make sure you get your pastels nice and ready. So as you can see, we've laid out the colors we're going to be using for our red eye tree frog. Now, if you want to make a different kind of frog, that's totally up to you. You can use any colors that you want. But for our explanation, these are the colors that I'm going to be using for my red eye tree frog. I'm going to be starting with a little bit of white, a bit of yellow, light blue, dark green, light green, orange, red, brown, and black. They're also laid out in the order we're going to be using them. All right, so here we are, get those colors ready, maybe press pause if you need to, and we're gonna get coloring right away. All right, let's get that white pastel ready to go here, guys. Okay, so we've got white. What we need to finish with the white is we've got to color in just this front of the tree frog here. It's sort of the belly area and just a little bit between the arm and the leg. Just a nice little line over here. I'm gonna show you what I mean right now. So obviously we're using the tip of the pastel. We've got to sort of color in to make sure to hide as much of that construction paper as possible. What I like to do is little sort of lines all together, make sure as I cover my space really well. That's it for our white. We're gonna be using it a little bit later on, so just put it to the side. Our next color is going to be yellow. Here we are, that nice sunshine, bright yellow. There's not too much of it. We've gotta do just a little bit around the eyeball. Remember that little space we created when we drew a little bit of a line around the eyeball, around that toonie we had? So fill that spot in. There we are, fantastic. We're gonna do a little bit at the bottom of the mouth here. That's it, great. Last spot is we're going to put a little bit of the yellow on the outside of that white spot. It's sort of going to be a nice transition piece between the, that white and it's going to be turning into green later on. All right, don't press too, too hard for this part. Here we are. You can even blend it into the white just a little bit if you'd like to. Fantastic. We do the same thing on this outside of the stomach part over here, the belly part. And I'm gently going to smooth it in just a little bit lightly on top of a little bit of the white. Creates a nice little blend there. Fantastic. All right, wipe off the extras. Here we are. And that concludes our yellow for right now. I'm gonna put that away. Our next color, like we already talked about, is gonna be light blue. All right, for the light blue, it's a little bit of detail we're gonna be doing on the stomach of our red-eyed tree frog. We're gonna start in this little crooks here that we created, that little sort of triangular piece. There's gonna be a little bit of blue in here. I'm using the tip of the pastel, I'm not pressing too, too hard because I'm blending it with the white a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit of blue in that little space there on the stomach. Fantastic, that's looking pretty good. Now this next part sort of almost looks like stripes on its belly. They're gonna be sort of chunks of blue. The first one is touching the arm. All right, here it is. It's a nice little sort of oval piece. There we go, it's about the size of my finger or so. All right, leave a little space of only white and draw another nice oval. There we are, fantastic, nice now oval. We've left that little space for the white pastel. We're going to do another couple to fill it up. Fantastic, all right. Next color in our order is going to be that nice dark green, that nice forest green, one of my favorites. I love this one. Now, this is going to be used for a bit of shading that we talked about earlier. We'd like to add some darker shading towards the bottom of our frog, the part that's sort of furthest away from the light source in our picture. We're assuming, of course, the light source is coming from the top somewhere up here, and the darkness or the shading is going to be a little bit towards the bottom of our frog. Now, guys, don't be afraid throughout this whole video to press pause at any time you want so you can catch up. 
All right, boys and girls, here's what I've done. I've added just a little bit of that dark green shading. Now, as you can see, the furthest points of the way from the sun, which our light source is probably somewhere towards the top here. So at the bottom, I press a little bit harder with my pastel. And then as I climb my way up, I press softer and softer because I know I'm going to be blending this later on with a lighter green. It looks a little bit like this. I'm going to add just a little part in here and then press softer as I work my way up something like that in these different areas here and you can blow the mouth, the arm, the leg, and at the back. All right, now we're moving on to a nice light green color. This is a nice lime light green that I'm using. And like I said, you don't have to use the same colors, but I'm going to be using this really nice lime green. It's almost the same color as my paper, but I have to make sure to blend it a little bit into that dark green as I'm working. Now I've got quite a bit to cover here, so I'm going to be starting at the head and working my way down. Alright guys, as you can tell, I've filled in that green, I've blended it up a bit with my dark green. Now the magic about pastels is if you've lost all your dark green, you can always re-grab that dark green and add another layer to blend it back in. So adding a little bit of dark green again, and maybe that light green, and blend it all back up again. Alright, you could do layers and layers of that pastel to create that really nice smooth effect. All right, guys, next color, you're doing so well, keep it up. Here we go, we've got that beautiful, nice pumpkin orange we're gonna be using next. All right, they're, these tree frogs are so cool, those orange sort of digits they've got. We're gonna be working on the toes and the fingers for this part, so grab that orange pastel and here we go. All right, guys, as you can see, I've colored in a little bit of my orange. Now, some of these parts are a little bit tricky. They're small little areas. So what I did is I traced it first, then filled it in just to make sure I don't go outside of my lines. I've also blended just a little bit into the green in the foot over here, just to create a nice little transition. And the last but not least, you can tell that I didn't color in all the eyeballs. I've done almost about halfway. Now, as you can see, I started really hard at the top, and as I worked my way down, I kind of got a little bit lighter. This will be for blending into the red later on. And don't forget that little eye that we've done on the side. All right, guys, we're on to that nice, fun red part now. We want to do that last part of the eyeballs. That's how we're going to start. So don't forget to start at the bottom, pressing sort of hard, tracing out where we're going to be putting it, and then blend into that orange really nicely in the middle. Now, I've talked to you before, if you've lost the orange or you didn't do quite enough, you can always go back and sort of blend your colors together, doing layer upon layer with these nice oil pastels. Don't forget the little eyeball on the side. That's the tricky one. It's kind of a little space, so go slowly. And then finally, I'm going to put maybe just a touch of red at the bottoms of these fingers to create just a little bit of shading. Fantastic. There we are for red. All right, guys, we're working our way towards the end now. It's starting to really look like a frog. Keep going with me. You're doing a great job. We're up to the brown now, guys, this nice chocolatey brown color. All right, I'm going to be working with the branch now. I have to be really careful. What I don't want to do is I won't want to get this brown on my nice and clean hand. If I get it on that, I'm going to be having brown spots all over my page. So be really careful where you place that hand that's holding the paper. All right, I'm going to start on the top here and then work my way down. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of tracing so I know exactly where the branch is going to be. I might even trace around my frog just to make sure I don't go inside of my beautiful frog. And now I'm just going to be coloring it in. All right, guys, as you can see, I've got that brown branch really done. It's got a nice contrast for my red tree frog. And then I filled it all in really nicely so I can't see any of that green paper coming through. The last color of the day, folks, is that black oil pastel. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be tracing our whole picture. Now, if you, for some reason, would like to do a bit of a background, now would be the time. We can't, unfortunately, do it after the black because then you're going to create some smudges. I'm going to keep things simple and just move along with my black tracing. But if you need to pause it and work on a little bit of a background, you're totally welcome to. Start at the top, then we're going to work our way to the bottom. Don't press too, too hard, nice and soft, and we're going to be tracing out all our black parts for our picture.
All right, guys, as you can see, I've traced out everything with my black oil pastel. Now, it's really important you have a steady, nice, confident hand when you're doing this. You don't want to be doing lines that are going back and forth or jagged lines. You want a nice, smooth line as you're tracing. All right, nice one motion, just tracing your line. Okay, guys, one last little detail with that black oil pastel. Now, instead of using the tip of the pastel, we're actually going to be using the belly or the side. We're going to be pressing really softly. I just want to create just a little bit of a shadow on the branch, just underneath where the frog is, just to create a little bit more of a 3D or realistic effect. Back. All right, so I'm using this side a little bit. I'm putting just a little bit really softly on the branch underneath my frog. I have to be really careful here because this is the black pastel again. All right, guys, now if you're feeling that you're doing a really good job, you feel like adding a couple more little details. We've added those shadow be below the frog, but we could also add a little bit of texture lines on our branch. Now, the way we're going to do that is we're going to go back to the tip of the pastel. You're going to do a couple little lines here and there, not pressing too, too hard along our branch. There we go, a couple, not too many, just to create that textured look. All right, guys, I told you that black was our last pastel, but I think we should add just a little last touch that's gonna make this really pop out. Now, you, what you need is that dark green, and you need that white one more time. Here we go with the dark green. We're gonna add just that little sort of circle that red-eyed tree frogs have just below their eye. And this is gonna be a little bit smaller than that tuning we used at the beginning. So go carefully and slowly, be careful of the black. We're gonna add that nice little circle. Last thing we're going to add is a little tiny bit of white for the sort of glow that these tree frogs have on their back. All right, so we're using that white pastel. I'm going to put a couple little dots here and there. All right, perfect. And there it is, guys. Thanks so much for following along with me and me creating this really cool red eye tree frog together. You did a fantastic job. Now, could you please make sure at the bottom of this video to hit the like and subscribe? All right. And make sure to check out some of our other really cool projects we're doing for this series. Thanks again, guys. And we really hope to see you again soon. Watch for these other great projects on Kids Arts Day every day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.